Okay, this is Adam Rayner here again for Talk Audio TV, working for AV Tech Solutions here today. We're looking at the JL Audio domestic, as in home theatre and stereo use subwoofers. And this, well, currently this is the most bad line that comes into the UK. This is the Fathom line of woofers. The one above it is the Gotham one, Manny. Yes, the Gotham is the flagship thing. And that's, that's just completely insane. The entry level of 15 grand on the Gotham. But this one... This is the first of the Fathom. This is, well, version two. Tell us about this product here. What's its name, sir? This is a JL Audio Fathom F112 V2. So it's a version two. And how many watts is it? It's 1800 watts RMS. <laughs> it's got a 12-inch <laughs> driver with the peak-to-peak -peak excursion of three inches, basically. So it's a three-inch excursion transducer. It's yes. got 1.8 kilowatts RMS. Yeah. That is bonkers um tell us all about that controller because that's okay so it's a huge powerful piece of kit but it's it's not just about it being a weapon is it this is enormously subtle too tell us about the control for this thing sir. well one of the things that you'll notice with the fathoms is that at the end of the day you, you're paying for fidelity and dynamics and you're paying for that pitch note definition so you're paying for the subtleties and the intricacy of, of anything you're playing through and that's one of the, the beauties of this particular product it's very clean, it's very dynamic, and it's got bag loads of dynamic power behind it. And that's the reason why you need the 1800 watts RMS. Now, it's about headroom rather than yeah, just making a racket. Yeah, just making a racket. So what you are playing for is basically the quality of the product and the quality of reproduction of yes. audio that it produces. So the other thing that's a really stunning feature of the Fathom series is you have a front-mounted control panel. So you, one of the worst things you can ever have is leaning over at the back of a trying to get around the back or you move it into yeah. it and then when you put it back it isn't quite in the same place yeah or you're trying to make adjustments so everything on this unit is front mounted control panel allows you to make the adjustments for this particular sub so what you have is you have an off on an auto on off button so you can either have it on signal sensing or on yeah and the other thing that you have right next to it is you have di digital automatic room optimization now that's JL Audio has got a proprietary EQ system, which is 18-band digital EQ, and it's one of the easiest things to operate. All you do is you place the microphone in the balance microphone socket, you place the microphone into a stand in the listening position, yep. you hold down the calibrate button for three seconds, it will send a set of test tones to the microphone, it will measure the in-room response of the sub, and set an 18-band EQ. To so the, the subwoofer does what I call doing the doof doof because Yep. That's quite a good impersonation, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and then the equaliser checks out the peaks and troughs in your room and sets itself accordingly. Yes, so that gives you a very clean, flat bass response rather than having peak booms in the room. So it will allow you to place a sub in, in positions which wouldn't be as so like usable. Acoustically perfect, perfect. but yeah. the wife says, you can't leave it there, it's going in the corner. Yes, and, and it'll give but you... But it'll be in the corner. Adjust it, love. Yeah. Yes. So it'll give you a very clean response. Then what you have is a defeat button. So once you've done the EQ, you can actually uh, see what the EQ is doing like by actually that. walking up to the sub, press the defeat, and sit down... And, and actually go, finish. oh my God, that is so much... Oh, that's better. Oh, yes. Ooh, 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 ooh. That's a very JL Audio feature as well. Just so confident of how cool they are yes. that you can turn it off and then turn it on again just to go, oh man, I spent my money well. Yes. <laughs> very JL Audio. <laughs> But um, the other features that you have is you have an input mode LED indicator. So you have a master and slave function. Now I'll explain oh, the master and slave function. That's fairly clear to me. Dude. Yeah. One can be in charge and the other one does this flipping told. Yes, so what you can have, you can daisy chain multiple JL Audio subwoofers using a balance lead. And you set one to slave and one to master. Uh -huh. And the master unit then basically controls all the other subs and EQs all the other subs. So the one sub becomes a master unit. Uh -huh. So if you've got an a, a AV receiver with a single LFE output, it now allows you to multiple daisy chain subs and, and basically get the JL Audio master unit to basically EQ. Uh, so again, for those, uh, when you look at the instructions, you end up hurting for feeling a little bit of a pauper because it tells you how to set up one two or four and by the time you add it up that could be some quite serious money for instance that particular product how much is one of them that's uh this particular product retails at three thousand four hundred pounds in the high gloss finish oh, and three thousand only three hundred pounds if it's in the black ash this particular unit they've stopped making the black ash finish oh so this really is this it's is uh, really available in um, a bit like mr ford and his uh yeah. motor cars just in gorgeous or gorgeous and that's kind of it yeah wow now, what a piece of kit See, what you have here now, you have a, a level mode, which you can set in reference, which is 12 o'clock, which is zero, which is basically 
at the 12 o'clock position. Then you, or you can stick it a variable and then you've got a variable, variable gain control. Now the other feature you have is lights on, dim or off. Now obviously in some dedicated theatre rooms you don't want to really be seeing an LED at the front of the room. Yeah. So basically it allows you to turn that off. But when you're EQing you will actually need the light switch to be on. Because yes. what happens is when you measure the in-room response using the microphone when you calibrate for a digital aero, if it's too loud the front LED light will blink on the, the calibrate button three times a second if it's too loud. Ooh. If it's too low, then once a second. So, gotcha. it, so when so you can optimum count, is what yeah, you need. Yeah. So optimum yeah. is what you need. So the the, the mic is is within its own parameters of measure. Yeah. So, so it's important obviously to leave that on when you're setting up. But obviously, once you've got a setup, you can set it up in dim or off. Then next to that, you've got a low pass filter mode. Now you can have a twelve dB or twenty four dB block to roll off slope. That's a feature that kicked in in the range below as well, but that means you can either have it really quite steep or like a brick wall, absolutely yes. solid. Now, you only engage reduction. the low-pass filter if you're using, for example, a two-channel system where you didn't have a crossover, so yeah. you, you're actually implementing the low-pass filter of the sub. Gotcha. So then you've got a low-pass filter crossover frequency. For the subwoofer itself. For the subwoofer itself, so it can go from 30 all the way to 130. Uh -huh. And then L-trim you have, which is quite a unique feature to the Fathom subs completely. It's called ex extreme low frequency trim. So what this allows you to do is change the gain level or the level at 20 hertz. So you can go minus 12 dB or plus 3 dB at 20 hertz. Now, you might find that if you're living in a flat and you don't want to necessarily annoy your neighbours uh, on the ground floor or the lower floors, you might reduce the low frequency response uh, at 20 hertz. So therefore, you don't upset them as much. So it, it's a functionality that allows you to also adjust for your room. If you prefer more low end, you, you can adjust to add 3 dB to it if you've got loads of headroom Whoa. there. So One thing I did learn about in my early days as pro audio um, is that the deepest, deepest frequencies, unless you have a hundred thousand pounds worth of floating floor, they do what's called going structure born. Structure born means that you can be soundproofed as heck but the sound transference, low frequencies, lava solid building. And if you live in a block of flats, they'll all know when you're running your fathom. Unless you're going to turn a bit of 20 hertz down. It gives you some adjustability. Yes. Personally, I'd have spent that money in order to be able to feel my insides actually shake around, to be honest. But um, <laughs> <laughs> that's just me. But it does give you that control. And it might well be um, something which uh, could be really useful. So you get that massive power, transient, high fidelity, without necessarily calling a sky while in through your flipping living room window. Yeah, and then one of the features you also have is obviously 0 to 270 degrees phrase and you've got polarity, which is polarity inversion from 0 to 180 degrees. And that's so, uh, ultimate room acoustic adjustability right there. Yes, so it allows you to basically phase match with this, this is your main speaker. Awesome. Now, so, £3,000 worth of 12-inch woofer with a 1.8 kilowatt amplifier in its guts. What I'll do is I'll turn the sub around so you can actually see the amplifier plate. You see that I'm struggling? <laughs> <laughs> an indicator of the mass of it. Yeah. Check that out. That's some hench ironmongery. Yes. Big cooling fins, vertically mounted. Look at those lovely plug holes. They don't look like XLRs. They're weird, aren't they? But they are, uh, they are the modern version. That, that's basically two balance inputs. Yep. So, well, you've got your left and right balanced input, you've got your RCA inputs. This here is what we discussed earlier, this is output to slay. So this is the balance lead that you, where you can daisy chain multiple subs. Then what you've got is your, you've got grounded and isolated. So if you get a ground hum coming through your system, if you, where you've got a ground loop, you can actually ground lift the RCAs. And then you've got master and slave. This is the master and slave switch that you basically, when you want to select this unit as a master unit, push it down. If you want another unit which is connected to this via this XLR, you set that to slave and then you can daisy chain multiple subs and that's that's about it really. So for when you absolutely need twelve thousand pounds worth of jail audio subs from www.avtechsolutions.co.uk. Thank you very very much indeed mate that's flipping awesome. Let's have a look at an even bigger one next. What do you say? Yep, no problem. Laser. Thank you.